I'm Natalie McCool and welcome to my podcast McCool and the Gang. This episode is a South by Southwest special recorded live in Austin, Texas, featuring chats with US indie pop artist Anna Fox Roshinsky and Sarah Corcoran from Irish indie band Pillow Queens. It was so great to chat with both of them and also see them play live at the festival. So tune in for wisdom, insight, and as usual, giggles. Here we go. I think you're a magnet, and I'm a magnet too. People just attract like magnets, like me and you. Hello everyone, I am sat here with Anna Fox Wachinski. Have I said that right? Yes. <laughs> at South by Southwest, just before her set at Yellow Jackets. How are you doing, Anna? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah? Um, I'm having a little coffee. <laughs> I just had a little salad, and nice. I'm, yeah, just getting my my act together physically and mentally <laughs> after a late night, but yes. I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> Who did you go and see last night, or where were you? Well, we played two shows, and then we, like, played at Hotel Vegas, went to play another show, and then came back to Hotel Vegas, and then left to go see um, this band, Gustav. Gustav. Um, Okay, They're cool. from New York, and Ooh. yeah, it was. They did a great job. They played at a place called um, Antones. Okay. Yeah, it was fun. It just went. It went late, and you know, we were just kind of like partying, and uh, yeah, it's nice to be back at South by though, like doing this exact thing. Yeah. Have you played it before? Um, as a solo, or you played in Quilt. You played in Quilt. In Quilt, Quilt night, played yeah. a few times for sure. Like we came a bunch, and then I. This is my first time officially playing as a solo artist, but I did come here in, like, 2008 or 2009 by myself. Um, But that was just, like, very casual, and I maybe played one or two little acoustic guitar sets somewhere back in the day. I think I played on top of a mountain. Wow, that sounds cool. Um, Yeah, you know, it was like that kind of vibe. But no, this is my first time here since my record's been out. Yeah, it's been it's been so far. I listened to it this morning while I was brushing my teeth. (laughs) Nice, (laughs) it was great. I love the opening of um, Cherry. Oh, awesome! Really cool. Thank you. Yeah. What? How did you like envision those sounds? The beginning of Cherry. Well, I just sat down with a Korg mini log and like cool. did it and I layered a couple synths and that was pretty much that. And yeah, I love it. It's a it's an easy sound to recreate on that synth and um, yeah, Claire Claire's gonna be doing it later. Nice. But you know, it was it was fun to do like an extended intro like that, like an acu- the yeah. sci fi kind of like electronic intro. Just yeah. I don't know, other kind of an otherworldly intro. Nice. What yeah. what other kind of like weird sounds did you stumble upon when you recorded the album? Or is there like one mm. sound that you just can't get enough <laughs> of? Like, you know? Mm, good question. Um I mean, there's a lot of weird sounds that happen literally once or maybe twice on the record that are funny. I just think they're funny. There's like a, <laughs> there's like a train honking, like a freight train noise. Um, there's like a, um, there's just goofy little like <laughs> things that happen like seriously like one single time. And that was fun for me because I was like, why not? Fuck it. I think this is yeah funny and cool and i'm you just gonna it live as well it's like cool thing to do it yeah throw in there and... yeah exactly exactly um no but i i guess synth wise like there are a lot of different kind of synth sounds on the record and it's been tricky in a way to recreate the exact sounds live because they we were just using whatever was around so it was like i wasn't creating this record in a way that would make it at all easy to play live in fact it was (laughs) quite the the opposite (laughs) it was very like studios like I'm just going in and gonna do whatever I want I'm not gonna think about the real world implications of any of these creative decisions I'm just going to like have as much fun as I possibly can and like work with that live and won't be identical but I don't think it should be anyway no yeah no it needs to have more energy doesn't it Do, do you like Beck 
I love Beck. I was just at the lifelong key. fan. Yeah, I was at the keynote, his keynote at the ACC. I didn't even know he was doing that till you mentioned it earlier. Yeah, I am yeah. bummed I missed it. How was it? Oh my god, he's just a genius. Like, That's so cool. He is just legendary. He is like iconic for, for me. Like yeah. he's, I mean, dude, like, yeah, he's been. I've been a fan of his since I was like a child in the '90s, and still listen to him all the time for inspiration. Yeah, I got, I kind of got um, that kind of angle when listening to the those sounds, and I was like, oh yeah, this is really cool. <laughs> That's like awesome. This. I'm so glad you picked up on that. No, there really were like specific Beck songs that I was bringing in to sessions, being like, you know, the feel of this one's really good, or like. I really like the way the bass line kind of is in this or whatever, so... Yeah. I've, yeah, he, it's fun now to be able to, like, use him as inspiration since I've been such a fan of his for my whole life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's 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 done a lot of, like, different stuff. Like, he, he was talking about his acoustic. Um, he's doing, like, a show, of, a, a slew of acoustic shows. Oh, yeah? And just talking about how that's kind of really scary but really nicely intimate... Mm -hmm. But I just wondered, like, you know, having played in a band for so long and then, you know, doing your solo project, like, do you feel it's really different or is it, like, different challenges? How mm -hmm. do you feel? It's like, different, for sure. Um, yeah, and, like, there's things that are easier and things that are harder. It's almost like an inverse situation because... Quilt is like a really collaborative, I mean, that's why the name makes sense. It was like named that way to be indicative of the fact that it was like a, a group, like a group effort, more or less, like with everything, with even with like logistics to an extent. And now, yeah, I mean, I'm figuring it all out um, as I go. And it's really wonderful to have creative freedom and do whatever I want to do. Yeah. But yeah, like finding bandmates, like people are busy, you know, it's just it's uh, definitely a new set of challenges but it's nothing new. So many people do it this way and are in the same boat as me and I'm getting great advice from yeah. friends that like have been doing it this way for longer mm. than I have and uh yeah, I guess it's it's different, but it feels really good to be finally um, just having having the opportunity to just do it my way is is great. Yeah, and like yeah, it's it's cool. I guess what I don't have at the moment is like a proper solo set, like where it's just me on a stool or something. I don't really have a way of doing that at the moment, but. I don't feel an overwhelming need to have that either. Um, I don't even know if I'd want to, mm. but yeah. maybe one day, you know, I'll, I'll be in that mood. Yeah, we'll sure. See. I think it's, I know, being, a, being a, like, I've been a solo artist, like, all my kind of, mm. like, musicians. Like, like I've been okay. in bands, and I'm still in, like, mm. so different bands, like, sessioning and things like that, but, like, oh, cool. writing-wise, it'll just being me and just doing what I want to do but mm -hmm. it's hard like finding people to perform with and yeah I found my band like after like years of playing with different people and it's like yeah yeah exactly I love them so much they're like that's awesome that's amazing yeah. it's no it's been people. working out it's been working out like with COVID it was just strange to like come out of that era of COVID with this record and see if people like see what people were up to basically um and when I I did this live video in the summer and it was cool because I was really lucky to be able to play with those people in that that formation of the band because they're all super pro and you know it was the first time any of us were playing music with people in however long so people were like available and like excited and didn't have, their schedules hadn't filled up yet with all their cool stuff that they do so that was a, that was a really special example of the band because it was like specific to that video mm. um yeah and now it's like okay well who has who has the availability for touring and 
you know, who isn't going to need a million dollars per show. Like, it's there's a lot of things that come into play. Yeah. A million kittens. The People rider. who are just kind of down, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's the tricky thing. But that's, when you find them, it's amazing. Yeah. You know? It makes it a lot easier, definitely. Yeah, it's... It's been, it's just been great. But even coming to South by and playing with a rhythm section local to Austin has been so fun. Mm -hmm. Like, God, it couldn't have worked out better. Um, and then you just, and now I just know two more cool people in the yeah. country that play and like can call them or yeah. whatever. Yeah. One of them is actually playing with his band in New York like next week and I'm going to go see them. Oh, that's so <laughs> You know, cool. it's cool. It's like make it's new like... friends everywhere you go. That's <laughs> yeah, honestly yeah. one of the best parts of doing this whole thing. Yeah, and, and me doing these interviews is so cool to chat to people who I've never <laughs> come into like contact with. Usually like, you know, being from the UK, Liverpool. Is you like... do live in the UK now? Yeah, oh. well, I live in, I'm from Liverpool, but I live in London now. Cool. Yeah, yeah so... Okay. Give me a shout when you're over. <laughs> I'll be there in June. Yeah, I saw you doing a, you're doing a string of dates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah you let, should come out. Me, yeah, let me know. Definitely. Awesome. I'll awesome. Be there. Where are you playing again in London? Oh, geez, I don't remember the venue name, um, but I'll send it to you when I figure yeah, yeah, it out. Yeah, 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 don't worry. <laughs> I'll be there. Yeah, cool. it'd be great. Um, what were your influences for the record? There were a lot of different ones. Um, Beck was one, specifically kind of like the late 90s, <clears throat> Midnight Vultures era Beck. Um, that album, for sure, very influenced by certain era of pop, that kind of like a mid-90s, early mid-90s pop sound, like a lot of Madonna, yeah. uh, Robin's first record. Okay, um, yeah. You know, a little bit of Janet Jackson, like like that kind of very polished... Um, very crisp yeah. female pop yeah. is something I've always loved yeah. forever. Um, it was almost like all the influences that like couldn't make it into Quill, I just like went full hog <laughs> on because I've just been waiting and waiting to yeah. like... And also just like good funk music, like leaning into a, the side of me that has <laughs> like just leaning into this like desire to make funkier music that yeah. again like wasn't completely I think it was starting to pop through in Quote's last record that we did in 2016 but even then like it wasn't it, it like I needed more it was yeah. like a taste of something that I realized I, I really needed yeah. and um yeah that's, that's awesome. you know that yeah there's all sorts of influences I don't know like also, like, random, deep-cut, like, Japanese jazz that I find on YouTube at 2 in the morning, like, found its way in there in a couple parts, and um, talking heads and, like, yeah. some new wave stuff, like, nice. new wave guitar playing. I, I don't think I play a single guitar chord on the record, I think. Maybe I have play one, but I really wanted to keep it to, like, guitar lines and, and um, syncopated guitar stuff rather than, like... Ch chugling along yeah. on the chords. Yeah. It was a little parameter I set for myself, I guess. Yeah, I, I love that whole, like, Madonna era of, you know, Don't Tell Me. And, oh, and my God. Like that song is one of my favorite it's Madonna my songs. Favorite I'm obsessed ones. with it. I've actually been, like, devising a plan to cover it and figuring yeah. out how to, like, make it my own because I think it is so perfectly arranged and yeah, perfectly it's a, it's produced and perfectly recorded even with the string the synth strings yeah, yeah, yeah. and the weird kind of like choppy sampled acoustic guitar like I don't know what I could possibly do to improve on that <laughs> so I'm like well if I if I cover it I might have to like make it really different or like strip it back or I don't yeah, know yeah. I'm but I think about it all, all the time yeah, actually it's like this project I constantly have in the back of my head <laughs> it's such a good song yeah that and um I, I don't know whether it's called that but what it feels like for a girl in this world oh I don't know that one do you know what it feels like for a girl in this world I wonder if that's from that same album I music it might be I'm going to have to look it up. It, or it's a, like a B-side or something. But oh, it's, cool. it's a beautiful song. And like the whole intro is like spoken word kind of thing. Oh, cool. I think you'd love Classic. it. If you like Don't Tell Me, like, you'd love that Amazing. One. Yeah, check it out. I love kind of almost all of her eras. I definitely was bringing in tracks from Bedtime Stories into the sessions too, specifically like 
especially this song called um, I'd Rather Be Your Lover. I'm really obsessed with the bass line on that. Okay. It was like part of the inspiration for the feel of the bass line on Cherry, um, which that we then kind of mm, we got a little more minimalistic with it in the end and went with like a tried to go for like a Chibo Motto feel with the bass line, like as few notes as possible, but like as groovy as possible. Um, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. What's next for you after? Oh my goodness. Well, I fly home tonight, which is crazy. (laughs) I'm just leaving as soon as this set is done. And then I have to pivot to a short tour that I have with my friend's Widow's Peak in early April. So I have to like just get everything ready, get rehearsing, solidify the band lineup, go do that. And then I'm also just like... (laughs) You know, finishing demos and and um, working on new stuff yeah. whenever I can, yeah, and God. keeping a list of a running list in my phone of songs I hear that like changed my life that I simply must <laughs> simply <laughs> must remember when I'm you know going in to do the sessions and, yeah. and writing. So yeah, working on new songs and um, figuring out the plan for what will become of them. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it's. It's exciting. Yeah. New music always exciting. Stu- going in the studio is like the best part. Like, oh my God, I know. Process, isn't it? Like, what's it going to be like? <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like some songs I go in and I'm like, this is exactly how it has to be. Let's just make my shitty demo sound better. And some of them I come in and it's like, I have this song, but it's really just a melody and like some like a structure like how can we build upon it um but i'm not quite there yet i'm really still like at home writing like piecing it all together um making voice memos like kind of deep in the zone with that right now yeah Yeah. awesome yeah i can't wait to hear thank you what it comes out as like super exciting thank you it's probably gonna be a sec knowing how the industry kind of works with their timeline (laughs) but hopefully you know i'm i'm thinking i might try and put like a single out or something this year we'll see yeah we'll see i have lots of ideas but for the time being yeah just like getting through this funny kind of like delayed album cycle thing because covid really pushed it all back and um, i'm really grateful to be at south by southwest this year because you know it you can say what you want like i understand there's a lot of things about it that are fucked up and not good but at the same time we're all like my homies that are here we're all just here to like do the same thing and it's simple and we're just playing music and we're meeting people and we're seeing each other and like having a good time yeah and um it still feels fun even though I've been coming here since I was like 20 or 21 it still feels awesome yeah and I've been having a great week yeah it's (laughs) such good fun like it is just fun it's like it is what it is there's a lot of things about that are weird but it's like dude we just sat in our houses for two years I know yeah this is so sick yeah let's just enjoy it yeah a hundred percent yeah yeah Awesome, oh, big dog. Big dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. And I'm excited thank to you. hear your set shortly. Thank you. Let's go and get you ready. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Sorry, I just... Uh, uh, anytime I'm with someone whose accent I love, I have to do the same accent. <laughs> oh, please. All right. Yeah. All right, then. Come on. Oh, awful. So, hello. I am here with Sarah from Pillow Queens. I'm here with Natalie McCool and the gang. <laughs> Yay! Oh, I'm so happy to be here. We're at Tepper Southwest. Yeah. Uh, what's going on? We're at Tepper Southwest. That's mad. I thought it was a pandemic, then it was over, and now we're at Tepper Southwest. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty fucking cool. It's great. It? Like, I'm I, delighted. Yeah, like six months ago, my half birthday ago, I would never have thought I would be here right now. So. I thought it was your half birthday six months ago, and that would make today your birthday, which would yeah, be, well, if you hadn't good. mentioned that by now, would be terrible. Yes, yes. It, just for our listeners, it is my half birthday today. <laughs> Officially, Happy as of midnight, birthday. it's it's my half birthday today. I'm celebrating. Yeah. I celebrate I mean, any time I can. You've got an illegal beer on the street. I, I do. I have a beer under my armpit. It's quite cold. <laughs> We've all done it. <laughs> um, amazing. Uh, did you enjoy your show? I thought it was really good. I had a great time. Yeah, yeah. it was really, really fun. I, I like the tissue. 
I, uh, I've been doing that on this trip. I think maybe I've got hay fever and I haven't addressed it. And allergic to Texas. I might be allergic to Texas. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah. Uh, it was good. Somebody in the crowd gave me a tissue. I loved it. They call it a Kleenex, which I can't judge because I understand when people call things by brand names. It's fine. I judge it. I don't judge it. I judge it. I don't. Uh, but it was great. It was my, my. I mean, I have heard your music. I, I like. I love Liffy because Kath sent me it, and he was. She was like, "You will love this band," and I was like, "I love this band." <laughs> <laughs> it's my first time seeing you live, though. Oh, and cool. I was struck. But I know it sounds really awful. Like struck. Um, I was struck by your harmonies. Oh, cool. <laughs> and like the arrangements of the vocals. Yeah. Like, have you, what's, what's the question I'm trying to ask? Like, did you start the band around the kind of vocal compositions, like lyrics, or was it more like, we want to just get in a room and jam? So, we were all in bands before, and we were all the, the sole vocalist in those bands. Oh, right, okay. So cool. when we came together, wow. out of four separate projects, we all kind of wanted to be the front person. <laughs> And uh, we had to put our egos to the side a little bit, but we didn't have to put our vocals to the side. We just sing on every that. song. Yeah. Um, I just think we all really enjoy singing. You yeah. know, I'm pretty bad at writing harmonies because I can't really pick them out. So unless I've written a main melody, yeah. I'll need someone to feed me the harmony. <laughs> and then I'll learn it. But it'll take me listening to my harmony again and again and again and again to get it into my head. Yeah. But, uh, like Rachel who plays drums is the most like natural. She was on it. Yeah. She like her harmonies are ridiculous. She yeah. harmonizes with the fucking microwave. Like she literally <laughs> will be anytime she hears a note, she's song. like trying to do like and, and not even like a third, like a fucking weird harmony. Yeah. And you're like, how she do you do great. that? Yeah, and I, I'm always like amazed by drummers who can sing so well in tune. Like yeah. how, how are you hearing words? And sing it's bad. That? Yeah. It's very right. cool though. It yeah, is. really cool. Yeah. We kind of, I think at the start of the band, we are like, try it out, see if you can sing at the same time. And then she was like, can I? Yeah. And then, yeah. I, I lo- also like the way she has her mic as a vertical, like, almost like a, like, a snorkel. <laughs> oh, yeah, completely. Snorkel mic. I was like, yes. Like she, she calls it a, a gooseneck. I don't know if that's its official term. <laughs> but good. Kathy called it a duck microphone today. And I was like, I don't think that's what it's called. Yeah. But, uh, I'm, I'm labeling it snorkel. Yeah. Snorkel, snorkel mic. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Are you having fun at Austin? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so much fun. It's like, I came here in 2018. And even back then, it was like an onslaught of just, like, amazing bands and, like, mental people that I've oh, just met. Really? Um, but, yeah, it's been incredible. How many shows have you played? We did four. Yeah. And one thing I've noticed is, like, everyone who's here loves music so nobody's yeah. waiting to be convinced by your band they're already like Everyone, waiting to yeah. love you yeah yeah that's a they stand there theme. and they're like i'm already your fan i haven't heard a note but so like it, I'll, I'll buy your music i'll come and see you wherever you travel like everyone who's here just loves music yeah, yeah. and that's great because i just feel like anywhere else we've toured maybe it's just internalized insecurity but i always feel like <laughs> we've got to convince people right i think it's playing to other bands yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. here everyone's just like, we love you already. Yeah, That's yeah. So cool. So supportive. Yeah. I, oh, I almost feel like in the UK, so much snobbery goes on, and like, yeah, you know, people just stood at the front with their arms crossed, like, entertain me. Clearly, there's yeah. no, none of that here. They're no. just up for it. It also doesn't feel competitive. Like, there's definitely some shows that you're like, okay, I've got to get to that, or that band are very buzzy, or whatever. But like, it doesn't feel like there's one, two, three, four, or five bands dictating it. Like, it does feel like everyone's getting their time in the sun, which yeah. is really lovely. Yeah. Because um, I think with like showcases, sometimes there's a lot of focus on one or two bands and then it takes the spotlight off other bands um, but this one is definitely just like oh you, the showcase is what you make it yeah, if you're promoting yeah. it or like maybe you're playing in a venue like that has an outdoor bit and then people are walking by in the street and they hear you and they're like oh I really like this and then yeah, they come in suddenly okay. it's a packed stage and you're yeah. like oh, wow they're up for it yeah I, I also I noticed when you're playing live like the sounds I don't like the guitar and what you're playing all it just blended so well and just like how how long have you worked on that or did it was it something that you really thought about or did it come well it's something that's 
because I'm sure you know it's something that's so much easier to do when you're in your rehearsal space or you're in your like favorite venue at home or whatever. But as soon as you kind of pick that up and bring it somewhere new, you're like, it is probably going to be shit at least for the first while. Uh, we've blown like two battery packs on power boards since we got on pedal boards since we got here because the voltage is different. Oh yeah. And right. we thought we got it figured out because we did it before we were in New York and we were really kind of like we had no idea what we were doing at that point but we were like no 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 we know what we're doing we need to change the voltage to like yeah, the yeah. lower level it's fine. So we did that but then we accidentally plugged it into a UK voltage uh, board when we were at the British Music Embassy oh, shit. and it was just like boom it was oh, gone no. completely gone it was That's just like nightmare. oh like, shit okay yeah. uh, worst nightmare that it was is. My, yeah that was but my when worst you're nightmare. in a comfortable environment tonight was more comfortable because that didn't happen <laughs> definitely our tones felt a lot more considered like we we tried to hone in like guitar pedals and stuff like that because we were buying a lot of them for a while and just being like I need this one thing for 30 seconds in one song and oh, yeah, like yeah. maybe you need one pedal that does like seven things yeah, instead yeah, of like yeah, seven yeah. pedals that do the same thing um, but yeah no I think like it's more fun to play music that you love to hear as well so if you're not getting the tone that you want out of the amp it's going to be a little bit more shit yeah yeah but we're because we're going on tour in the US, we've got a backline rented, so we yeah. have an amp, we have three amps with us that we can bring in if there's, oh, God nice. forbid, a Marshall stack in a venue, and we're like, oh, I can't do it <laughs> myself, sorry, I just can't, I can't do it, I did it for long enough, like I did my entire 20s, we're playing through Marshall oh, stacks in venues where I didn't have fucking amps, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm, I'm a box not. girl. Oh, I'm a oh, box oh, girl. Oh, yes. Come on. I'm a box girl, and then... I can replicate it with a Fender, yeah. but I can't do it with a Marshall. No. It's just too trebly. I don't know. Maybe the new amps are different, but definitely the older amps are just like, I can't fucking do it. Yeah, the ones you get in school. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway, look, I've just been cancelled on your podcast because I've been bitching about <laughs> fucking Marshall. I actually think they've started, uh, well, I know they've started like a booking agency and they're like working with loads of cool bands. So yeah, I think they are, they are like a legit company. Yeah, yeah. They're just not my first preference for yeah. amps. <laughs> and that's fair to say, like, totally yeah. fair. I, 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 can I just say, I do not gel well with Fender amps. Oh, do you not? No way. That's very interesting. I, they're definitely my go-to. I just, they're a plug and play for me, but it's just, yeah. I prefer. It's a preference thing, right? It is. I was going to ask as well, I fucking love the band name. <laughs> oh, thank you. I was like, hey, look, oh my God, <laughs> yes. No one wants to be a pillow queen, but after seeing you, everyone wants to be a pillow queen. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so, like, I'll put my hands up and say I'm an absolute pillow queen. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. Like, no, come life on. Life is good. Life right? is life's easy when you're a pillow queen. Uh, what, what percentage of the band do you think are pillow queens? Actual pillow queens? Uh, 25%. <laughs> like, definitely at least 50 <laughs> Definitely I like that. at least 50, yeah. Okay. It's why, like, we would just never work as, like, a couple. Like, any of us <laughs> in the band is just like, yeah, no, that's not, no, we're all pilgrims. Like, it just wouldn't work. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, the band name, we gave a lot of thought to it because the band was kind of in formation for a while. And we had, like, a Google Doc with all, like, potential band names. And I... I still think to this day I came up with Pillow Queens, okay. but the girls won't credit me with it. It was a point of contention. I think okay. I came up with it, because yeah. I'm hilarious. I mean, you're the only one here, so you can so say I it. I came up with it. <laughs> but I also, I wanted to call us Pink Whale, which is a fucking terrible Pink, name. Pink Whale. Pink Whale, because I was like, I really like whales, like an orca is my favourite animal in the oh, whole world. Okay. I dream about them all the time. I'm kind of weird about it. I don't know why. <laughs> I can't figure out why. I've don't never get, met one. Don't, I don't get in a pool with one. No. I'm yeah. yeah, well, yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> Blackfish is a fuck movie but it's also informative <laughs> uh, and then I went I don't know I just always love whales and the blue whale being the biggest animal in the world I, I always thought that was kind of a gendered thing because okay. it's blue right a blue is always associated with like men so I was like what about a pink whale and then I wanted to call the band that but um in hindsight, that's a shit name. I'm really glad that we're called Pillow Queens. Okay, I'm going to add that to my list of band names. We've, we've, got, we've got a list that we've, we've like just joked about in Texas of band names, and I think my favourite one is... Oh, tell me. <laughs> so, this is probably 
really awful. But I used to have like, um, I used to have dyed black hair with like a really razor cut fringe and like bobs. So like almost like face, like great. hair color. Sounds great. It was cool, but I did get. <laughs> I was in Australia once. And a woman at a market stall, she was Cantonese, and she just, like, took one look at me and went, you look like my 11-year-old daughter. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool, that's a bit, that's a look, I'm, I'm okay with that, but now I'm going to change my hair. So I think my favourite name from this trip is 11-year-old Cantonese girl's haircut. That's fucking <laughs> brilliant. That is great. Or, Closely followed by Fuck Knuckles. Oh, Fuck Knuckles is yeah. gorgeous. And State Baby. State, State Baby. Baby. Yeah. These are actually very good. They're really good. Yeah. Like, they would work. Yeah. They do work. They do work. Ominous Fog. Fuck. <laughs> what are we thinking? We have terrible banners. <laughs> um, are you excited to go on tour and go on James Gordon? I can't fucking wait. I can't fucking wait. Now, I know I've been giving out about this already, but of course everything has to be above board with James Corden, so they're PCR testing us before we go on the show. Yeah, you want to like, pass those? We've been in South by for a week. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Yeah, you we're going to get COVID. Beck's giving us COVID. Exactly, ah, right? And I, we can say this because we're sitting outdoors, so I'm not giving it to you as we speak. <laughs> but, and I have it five weeks ago. I definitely don't have it. But one of us might, you know? Well, so yeah. if you see us on James Corden, we didn't have you didn't. COVID. And so that's all, brilliant. Oh, good, oh, good, yeah. oh, good. good. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, so I can't wait. We've never done a US or North American tour generally. Uh, it's the longest we've ever toured. And we have a big old van. Yay! It's, it's right there. Right yeah, there. yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Gorgeous. Yeah, I mean, we're probably going to kill each other by the end of it. Oh, you'll be right. I don't mind. Like, it'll be with love. Killing yeah, with love. Yeah, <laughs> That's a thing. Uh, yeah, no, I can't wait. I'm so excited. It's, it's going to be great. I'm excited. And, um, yeah, what's, are you recording new stuff? Are you... Uh, so we have an album recorded, it's coming out April 1st, and it's our April second, Fool's April Fool's Day, it's perfect for us, yeah. it's our second album, uh, it's a little bit different to our first album, but then maybe it's not, and I just think it is, because they're new songs, but uh, <laughs> no, I think it is, and yeah, really excited to put it out, because the last one came out in the middle of the pandemic, so it was just kind of like, here you go world, and then never get a chance to tour it. It's going to be great. Yeah. I'm excited, excited for you guys. Thank you. Nice and smash it all. Yeah. And thank you so much, Sarah. Thanks for having me. Pillow Queen. Woo! Thanks so much for listening and don't forget to subscribe and follow to this podcast. I'm Natalie McCool and you can find me and my music on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube and also on my website nataliemccool.co.uk Thanks!